Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not, I'm not profiling. I am uh, as, as concerned as anyone about climate change. I got a master's in environmental science, so, you know, I'm there. I think on a per capita person, on a per capita basis, we reduced our climate emissions more than any state in America. I'm pretty sure that's true over the last eight years. The, the fracking part of it is, you know, a question that is whether it gets into groundwater. I mean, that's really the issue about fracking or whether it causes earthquakes, right? Well, also, then it puts carbon emissions up in the air eventually when that cracked fuel is burned. So if that's it. So if there's almost unlimited hydrocarbons in other ways coming up, right? In other words, there are hydrocarbons being produced all over, everywhere. But the fossil fuels are a big contributor to climate change. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but then fracking isn't going to change that. What we've done, we went to the oil and gas co companies and sat down and said, all right, and every time you're moving around natural gas, right, which is the, that's the way we got rid of most of the coal plants. We want to compare you know, uh, climate change destruction, right, the really harmful pollutants. Methane is 40 to 60 times worse than CO2. So they've been letting this stuff escape and flare. We're the only state where we sat them down and we got the Environmental Defense Fund, the Colorado Environmental Coalition, all of our major environmental groups, and the oil and gas scientists and sat down and they, you don't trust each other, they don't like each other. It was like the Hatfields and McCoys, I mean, I'm not making that up. But in the end, we got them to agree, the oil and gas, they just said that they, if they're going to operate in our state, they've got to have a social contract, and they can't pollute. And so they're, they're, in the end, they agreed to inspect every pipe, every pump, every tank. Uh, they're spending $16 million a year doing that. It's the equivalent of, of removing 320,000 cars a year off the roads. And we're trying to get the other states across the country. It's now being rolled out of this national policy for Canada. We're trying to get it to be, you know, it was going to be, it was BLM. It was going to be all federal lands. Uh, but unfortunately, the president has... has and, that, and that's good. Wouldn't it be better to have no fracking at all? Well, no fracking doesn't make any difference at all. But what would be better would be to have no... Well, yes, but that's not... has nothing to do with fracking. Yet. The problem with fracking, if, if, if you ban fracking, you're, you're saying someone who owns mineral leases, right? So, so some private person owns those mineral leases. And if you ban fracking, that means there's something worth nothing. I, I have a question then. I'm a person who lived on an old land on the route of the Dakota Access Pipeline. So... When it comes to respecting landowner rights, whose do you prefer to respect? Those of people who profit from mineral rights, from fracking, or those of farmers whose land values have deteriorated? I'm always with the farmers, always with the farmers. But, but there's a point at which, when you're talking about someone that's running around mineral, mineral royalties and mineral they say those are some of zero. And you can do that in China or Russia. Right? You can take that. So what we try to do in Colorado is say, all right, we're gonna, we want to you know, uh, take away those mineral rights ban tracking over certain areas of the city or the whole state. I mean, we have a way to do that. It's called eminent domain. The IOP is not enough, but we pay half. The local counties, the municipalities, we just pay for it. With all due respect, Governor, I saw my former neighbors really, really have their land destroyed and get almost nothing in return, and the land is permanently destroyed because the easement will never allow them to plant a tree or build a building on that land again. And the crops might grow, but not as well. So it's a permanent deterioration of so the land. So that's true. We have a whole process by which they can go in and they can get the helicopter, and we can force the company to read, to revegetate, to, to recreate that land. And for farmers who are stewards of the land and love that land, the land can never be recreated. I, if you'd love to, if you'd like to talk to landowners whose land have been deteriorated, we'd love to hook you up. I've talked to hundreds of landowners. I'm glad to talk to more. Okay. I mean, this is one thing where I have spent an awful lot of time. Really, just trying to listen. Okay. Now the pipeline company wants to build another one here, or we'll, we'll increase the pressure and put more through this one. Would you come? Do you think it might uh, come out against that? I don't know anything about. I mean, yeah. You'll, there'll be plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. We'll, right, we'll, we'll keep talking. I suspect you will. We appreciate you coming. Thank yeah. you for your time. We really enjoyed our time in your state back in 2014. I'm very proud of Colorado. Yeah. His new granddaughter was just named Aurora. Yeah, my, my granddaughter was just named Aurora. After, after the town where my daughter was from. Aurora, Colorado? Aurora, Colorado. Because there's Aurora, the first Aurora was the Aurora in New York. Right? Just east of Buffalo. There's one in Iowa. Aurora, yeah.
Tony 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 Tony